Hi, AP Calc AB students, and welcome to, I guess, the encore for topic 6.9. I know that you were led to think that example 11 is where this particular topic finished, but I do have a pair of really quick examples that are going to introduce a final integration formula that is very unlikely to appear on the AP Calculus exam. So that's the good news. But the bad news is, is you have a teacher here that wants to teach you calculus. And this is a, a group of problems or a group of formulas that is certainly uh, uh, something that is is in the calculus family. And in my particular Calculus 2 course that I teach, I bring these back into play. And so I really want you to be exposed to them right now because this is where they best fit. So let's take a look at our good friends, the integration of tangent, secant, cotangent, cosecant. Now, we're going to start off with our good friends, the integration formulas that we learned a few days ago, right? We already know these six, or at least you should know these six. Well, as far as integrating trig is concerned, we do have some unfinished business. Because as I said before, what about if we want to integrate just plain old tangent of x? Wouldn't that be something that would be doable? Isn't the curve tangent of x something that does have area that would lie between it and the x-axis? And of course it does, and we, we can integrate it. The question is how? Well, Let's dive right in and do it. Now, without showing you the formulas, there is a way that we can do this. Is it something that you're going to like? That remains to be seen. So if we had to integrate tangent, the only thing that we could really do right now is to rewrite the tangent as sine over cosine. Now, what does this have to do with everything that we've just learned here lately? Well, this is a u substitution problem. We can let the u in this particular fraction be the cosine of x. And if we take the derivative of that cosine, we're going to get negative sine of x. And we can swing our dx over, of course. Now, what that means is we have a perfect match for our u, all for our du, all except for that negative sign that I'll just float out to the front. And then I have basically a 1 over u form here. And then the integration of 1 over u, of course, is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus rc. And so at this point here, we can back substitute our u, which is the cosine, and we have this. A little weird, but it works. Now, I also want to warn you that this problem could be a little devious. If this negative 1 coefficient was applied out as the exponent, cosine to the negative first power is the same as cosine to the negative uh, 1 over cosine. I'm sorry, cosine to the negative 1 is 1 over cosine, at which point we could write this as a secant if we wanted to. But most often, I just ask my students to memorize it this way. All right, let's take a look at part be here. So what are we going to do with this guy? Well, I'm going to just warn you, you're probably not going to like what you're about to see, which is why I want us to learn some formulas. But with secant of x, the only way that we can really work through this one is to very diabolically, cleverly, however you want to think about it, multiply this by a very special fraction. A fraction that's equivalent to 1, of course, because we don't want to change the value. And that fraction would be the secant of x plus the tangent of x over itself. Not what you would expect, of course. But it's just one of those little tricks that's going to make this integrable. So we might think, well, what's the choice for u? Well, just as we did in part a, u is going to be the denominator. So u is going to be this secant plus tangent. OK, so what does that mean? What is the derivative of secant plus tangent? Well, let's take it and find out. So the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. OK, add that to 
the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared. All right, well, what's going on here then? Well, if you go back up to our expression, if we were to have taken the secant out in front, and distribute it through and you could physically do that if you wanted to but I hope that you can all see that this is equivalent to secant squared plus secant tangent in other words our numerator is the du that we need might might want to write this in red and then if I multiply that dx over then everything that I'm about to highlight here in yellow is going to account for my du everything else is the u that's in the denominator so lo and behold this thing just simply becomes the integral of 1 over u with respect to u and only because we saw to it to multiply by that very crazy secant plus tangent of x step over itself well how does this finish up well we get natural log of absolute value of u plus c as you would expect and then once we back substitute our u we're going to replace it with secant of x plus tangent of x. And then finally, we can put the problem to rest by adding our c. And that's what it is. Now, with that in mind, maybe, just maybe, I could entice you to think about memorizing a few more formulas and when I say few I mean two we already saw both of these the integration of tangent and see if I can highlight that a little bit better here we have our integration of tangent and then we have this next one which is our integral of secant which is exactly what we saw on the previous page if you were to do something similar with your integration of cotangent well it probably seems logical that your cotangent would have consisted of a cosine over sine so therefore your u would have been the sine instead and it does have a little bit of a different look here likewise your integration of cosecant is going to be negative if i could get this to highlight Well, it's not going to want to highlight in yellow. So I'll tell you what, let's just use our orange again. <laughs> it's not going to want to highlight at all. So anyhow, what we have here is the integration of cosecant, which is negative natural log absolute value cosecant plus our cotangent of x. Now, when we look at example 13 to, to finish things off with, um, what we're going to see here is that the square root of 1 plus tangent squared is just simply going to be a trig identity that's equivalent to secant squared, right? 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. When we take the square root of secant squared, we're going to get secant. So this problem here is just really, it's nothing more than asking us to integrate the secant. So you're going to go up and you're going to use this formula right here. Once you integrate, you're going to get natural log of secant plus tangent. And then you're going to plug in the boundaries 0 to pi over 4 in for that to come up with a final answer. Having a little bit of technical difficulties here, but I am going to do something here while we got the video going. I'm going to call up this solution key and I'm going to tell you what the answer is and see if you guys can work this out and match it. But once you work this out, you should get an answer of the natural log of the quantity 1 plus square root of 2. But really what this video is about is just getting you to understand that we have four more of these integration formulas that you see right here. And we're going to have to be on the ball for those because they're certainly a little bit tougher to memorize. If you put the forth, put forth the effort, you'll get the job done. I've seen it many times. It just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. So anyhow, I promise this puts an end to our topic 6.9 forward to seeing you at our 6.10 videos.